Police interceptors. Out in force in one of Britain's highest crime areas. He's lost it. He's a crash, crash, crash. Get him. Quick, get him. We're on patrol. It will kill us. With West Yorkshire's finest. I'll get on your back. Hold the guy. Get him. Behind the wheel. Still continuing, uh, but it's wrong side. Armed and ready. Oh, and poised to pounce. <laughs> Taking down the villains. I'll be back your back. Who put lives at risk. Stop, stop. In the war against crime, the interceptors are battling. Get down. On the front line. It's dangerous. There's no two ways about it. Coming up. A dodgy driver legs it. A suspected armed man kicks off. Get hands up now, and a textbook tea pack on a suspect motor. Switch it off! Turn it off! Switch it off! It's Monday evening, and interceptor Chris Spencer and rookie Chris Kilroy are on the hunt for a Volkswagen Bohrer. You're always lucky to drive around and checking cars out. One that's just driven past shows that he's not insured, but I've lost it in a nutshell. So I'm just trying to find it again now. Chris, nicknamed Spenner, is advanced driver, tactical pursuit and off-road trained and often needs all those skills to catch up with errant motorists. One of the hardest things in this job is that everything you see is always going in the opposite direction, so everyone's always got the upper hand. And generally, when someone sees us, if they've done something wrong anyway, they're, just, they're going to put the foot down. It happens all the time. And by the time I've spun round and tried to catch up with them, they've got such a head start, it does make it very difficult. Spenner's search takes him into a maze of residential streets. And just as he's about to give up, a white Audi A6 flies past. The driver has clearly clocked the cop car and puts his foot down. He's off, he's off, he's left, left. The pursuit is on. The Audi driver's floored it and mounts a curb on the corner. X-ray Romeo, 3 one. And does the same at the next turn. One, Wet roads and a reasonable amount of traffic the right, right. combined with appalling driving are making this pursuit dangerous. And the driver's now hammering it in a bid to shift Spenner, nearly losing it on a right turn. The driver is clearly unable to keep the car under control. He then loses it at the next corner and hits an electricity box. The driver's legged it, but he's no match for the interceptors. Give me your arm, give me your arm! Stop resisting. You stand up. What's that all about? Nothing, you just panicked, you literally made me panic. It's not a normal reaction, is it? You stand yourself up. The smash has drawn a crowd including one man who's keen to share his opinions with the world. Yo, BD3, day by one, get your car right off your face. The driver claims he panicked when he saw the cop car behind, but Chris suspects there might be another reason why he tried to get away. How much you had a drink? Nothing. You stink of it. Breathe on me. 
Some shark, a small boat. Whose car is it? Yeah. Who's car is it? Hello? You're just not talking. Let's pack it in with this game. Get your head up and talk to my colleague. He's asking you some quite easy questions. You're pinching it. Well, you're sure you're all right. Where's the key for the car? You're clearly all right, so answer the question. You're pinching me. Yeah, you're affecting my uh, human rights. Answer the I don't question, though. So. If you can you are human rights, you can answer very easy questions. Yeah, I'm not going to answer well, you, Kevin. I'm not. You're not. Yeah. Right. With the driver keeping stum, Chris turns his attention to the passenger, who's still in the car. That's all right. What? What's going on? We'll get to where then? But one bystander's making things difficult. Give me some space. Well, you got space there. There's plenty of space there, yeah? What's going on? We need to get him off to hospital, mate. Are you a paramedic? Me, yeah. I'm a first, I'm first no, aid trained. Me too. Yeah, so am I. So I'm a test I'm situation. We need to get out of the car, come I don't on. I need someone to tell me how to do my job. I'm a first aid yeah? well. You're a public servant, yeah? Oh, here we so go. So behave like a public servant, all right? Here we go. Yeah? Uh, We've got our details. Stop. What are you doing? Just a Hugo Boss top? Okay. You can't afford that. Thankfully, the passenger appears more shaken up than badly injured. Hey, do you need an ambulance or are you going to get you sent to hospital? Sound. I'm going to shuffle across, fella. Given the impact the car had in the crash, he's had a lucky escape, as has the driver. Big deep breath in and blow until I say stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you very much. Who's failed the drink drive test? Should the rest of drive myself with a spare limit as well? So you still under caution. The driver's now blaming Spenner for what happened. He's just driven over like four or five curbs. A new lot of chases, what? then obviously we're gonna do that, we're gonna panic. What happens if my kid's walking on pavement or some other kid? Yeah, but why would you chase us then? Why would you chase us? I dread to think. Why would you chase us? This lad, this lad couldn't care less. Oh, he's I just so care. intent. I could so care intent all about, on trying to get I away from all us. About kids. But look where his I car is. Cars just destroy, him. just destroy you. You're not listening to him. He's when he can put his blue lights on and chases, he don't care about his kids. Now the driver's decided to talk, Chris asks again about the car. So I'm going to assume you have nicked this car then? No, nicked this car. Who's oh, is it? My father. Your dad's car? Huh? You've been arrested before, Brick? No. Never? No. In your life? No. Well, what are you doing this for then? I'm in depression. All this for no insurance? the risks people are willing to go to to not get caught. Just beggars belief. Luckily, there's been no one still on the pavements when it's happened. When you look at the crowd of people that are here now, what would have happened if he'd come round, round the corner out of control and this crowd of people would have been here already? You don't even want to think about that. People like this need to be off the road. Uh, he is now. He is because he's crashed his car, unfortunately. It would have been, been a lot easier if he just to stopped. Back at the station, the reckless driver's now claiming they were lucky to catch him. Do you know me and you are going to have a race one day? I'm not early on in. We're going to go on the track. Honestly, I'm going to beat both of you. I was not ready to go. No further action was taken in regards to the driver having no insurance. However, he was found guilty of drink driving. He was fined £315, including costs, and banned from driving for 16 months. Thankfully, given his skills at driving, no one was seriously hurt. If there's a cop car behind that's got his lights on, just stop. It, it ain't worth it. Fortunately, nothing more serious than what's happened has happened. When you see all those people that are there, anything could have happened. It could have easily, it could have easily killed somebody tonight. Still to come, a stolen van nearly takes out a dog walker. He had a collision, he had a collision. A doorstep showdown. <laughs> And the interceptors get a mouthful. I don't give up. I'm a passenger. There you go. Yeah, okay. I suggest you calm yeah, down. It's not long after midnight, and interceptor Steve Huntington is blue lighting it to Halifax to help deal with a suspected armed man. We're up to a firearms deployment. There's been numerous calls now of a fight in the street, and there's been an allegation that one of the, uh, the suspects involved in the fight is armed with an axe and a machete. Dog handler Steve has his Belgian shepherd Macy on board. She's still in her first year on the job,
which is 20 fewer than her handler. Last year, police firearms teams in England and Wales were involved in nearly 16,000 incidents. Tonight, Steve and Macy are providing backup in case the suspect makes a run for it. If he tries to evade or if he tries to flee, obviously dogs are a bit quicker than uh, us cops, so we're, we're there just to support them, really. And hopefully detaining this chap without any, uh, without any incidents. Steve arrives to find a man in the front garden of a house and he's talking to the firearms team. Hey, look, I'm not... Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, oh, why should I? The firearms officers regularly work undercover, so we've had to obscure their identity. The man initially seems happy to talk to them. But as they approach, his mood changes. Steve and Macy are holding back, but she's poised to go after the man if he tries to run for it. It's a tense standoff. The initial call involved a man armed with a machete and an axe, so no one's taking any chances. Finally, the man approaches the firearms team. And they're not sure if the man is carrying any weapons. The officers need him cuffed and secured before going any further. Eventually, the suspect decides to give up. He doesn't appear to be armed, but he does have blood on him. And then... Macy's ready to move in. But the firearms team soon have him secured. Quiet. It's nice. Stay. Even with the suspect locked up in the back of the van, this operation isn't over. The firearms team need to secure the house. Show yourself! They don't know who or what's inside. Steve and Macy are once again poised to strike if anyone inside makes off. We've um, arrested who we think is the main suspect. They're still going to have to uh, enter and clear the house. Just on intelligence and the initial calls, being a fight in the street, when machetes and axes being used. We don't know if there's anybody injured inside the house or if there's any further suspects. It's a chance for Macy to calm down and for Steve to reflect on how she's performed. She's only been on streets for well, less than a year, so she, she still gets a bit excitable when there's stuff going on. But overall, she's, she's done her job. She's focused in on him and let him know that she's there. The firearms team have finished searching the house. There's no one inside, but they've made some interesting discoveries. Well, this is... Uh... She's just in there's been some sort of fight, but well, I think we've got a potential victim at hospital with nothing more than minor cuts, but you can see there's quite a bit, a bit of blood everywhere. There's also a weapon and what looks like ammunition. You've got there just your box standard tool to wear rifle. You know, if chap would have come to the door or window pointing this, there's a scope on top of it. Could have ended a lot differently. But as you can see, there's, there's something gone on with, with an amount of blood as well as the rifle and the ammunition, which was later found not to be live, there's a box of what looks to be cannabis. And up in the loft, the likely source of where it's come from. Yeah, proper setup, is it? There are um, half a dozen plants which are quite mature. With the main suspect locked up, drugs and weapons seized, it's been a successful job for Steve 
and the firearms team. He's on his way to custody. He's been locked up for possessing offensive weapons. Obviously, his cultivation of cannabis uh, and possibly suspicion of assault. So he'll, he'll be detained and interviewed in the morning. And most importantly, a potential dangerous standoff has ended up with no one getting hurt. The man is currently under investigation for the alleged assault, affray, and production of cannabis. No offensive weapons were found, so no further action was taken. The case is ongoing. There's around 8,500 automatic number plate recognition cameras in the UK, which read between 25 and 35 million plates each day. They're a vital weapon in fighting crime. It's one of the best tools I've ever uh, you know, experienced within policing. It's really impacting on criminals and um, really upsets their day-to-day -day work when uh, they're out and about and they're getting pinged by NPR cameras and police are suddenly on top of them, stopping them. And without the assistance of NPR, potentially, there's a lot of cars going past that we wouldn't otherwise have normally stopped. It's Sunday evening and interceptor Richard Whiteley and rookie Carl Hardcastle are on the hunt for a nicked motor. We're in an area now called Horsforth. Uh, which yesterday a stolen vehicle hit um, a couple of the AMPR cameras on the ring road, which we're travelling on now. It's an outstanding van um, that I believe has been stolen and it's hit earlier this afternoon. The same cameras. 16-year veteran Richard, nicknamed Jaffa because of his hair colour rather than his biscuit preference, knows these roads well and hopes this will help him locate the stolen van. I've worked around in this part of Leeds all my career, so you sort of know where people might go, roads in, roads out. There's the camera. Yeah. So that's going to be a front number plate going up. My feeling it's in there. It's, there. it's a game of chess. Despite a good look round, Richard's hunt for the stolen van results in stalemate rather than checkmate. So he and Carl continue on their patrol. Four hours later, the van spotted again. The Bellingo that we were looking for before um, on the ring road in Horsmouth has uh, hit again, not far from where it was hitting today and yesterday. And we're going to make our way over. Carl and Richard are 10 miles away, so he puts his foot down. Every officer near the location is now keeping their eyes peeled, and also for another car which they suspect may be in convoy. Units looking for that van, just be aware it may well be in combo with a uh, black Renault Clio. The vehicle's running with another vehicle and they may well be accomplices or friends of the people out for a, a ride in this stolen vehicle. The Clio that was mentioned is, uh, is local. I'm going to go up to the area where the other vehicle, the Clio, is uh, registered to because it may well be running in convoy with it. Five minutes later, an unmarked car spots the stolen van, which belongs to a local business. As his car's unmarked, the officer sticks behind the van while guiding other units towards his location. We're going west, 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 King Lane. But at the roundabout, the driver clocks the cop car behind him. And floors it. The vehicle's fell at the stop now. He's showing no concern for other road users, hammering down the wrong side of the road. Speed is 40 miles per hour, approaching roundabout standby. He takes the roundabout at speed, nearly hitting a man walking his dog. The van was just inches away from a potentially fatal collision. Thankfully, the dog walker wasn't hurt, and the impact of the van hitting the kerb has damaged the front tyre. This pursuit's over. He had a collision, he had a collision. Get him, get him, he's running out the other side, get him. Four men have jumped out of the van and legged it in different directions. Four so, males, one's wearing a great tactics cap, all in dark clothing. My colleagues say, they're going through gardens. Richard and Carl are just around the corner and join in the manhunt. Which way have they gone, Conroy? Down there and through the ginnels. Right, okay. 
3381. Eagle eyed Richard spots someone in the distance. Yeah, may I have uh, Kyle Ray? Where is it? Left here. They've seen a man running through a gate. He's gone into these gardens, or the gardens next door to it. So unless he's managed to uh, scale a fence quickly before we got behind him. But he's nowhere to be seen. Okay. Hello, have you just seen someone run through your garden? No. You haven't. No. Can I just check through here, please? You can. Yeah, there's a double gate there. He's not gone through this one. Or well, definitely this one. Yep. It must have been because there's, you can't have gone over that gate. He had a light blue top on. The runner's gone to ground. He seems to have done a disappearing act. Then a man approaches Richard. I've got no idea where this is connected. This is something walk down the side of your house. Right. Then I noticed the green recycle bin is in his own place. Right. And there's some stuff in it. Right, OK. Where's your bin? Green bin flat. Got a jacket. And his jeans. For one, I've got uh, jeans, t shirt, gloves, and a jacket. Are they your jeans? Yeah. No. <laughs> so they've got some clothes, but whoever was wearing them has vanished. He came in here. Cat, not a done. Jaff has seen um, a male run from this junction um, into a near, neighbouring property. Uh, we've jumped out pretty much straight away. Um, as soon as we've gone in garden, he's just nowhere to be seen. I mean, we're right behind him and he's just played the vanishing act, so it is frustrating. Bigger picture, we've got the car back, nobody was injured, nobody's hurt, they'll come again. Then they get a call that a car matching the description of the one seen driving in convoy with the van has pinged an ANPR camera less than a mile away. Richard and Carl are soon behind it. It's less than 20 minutes since the van crashed. They're hoping the runners are in the car if it pulls over. Interceptors in Leeds have been hunting for a stolen van. The vehicle failed to stop now. After a dangerous pursuit, where the van nearly ran over a dog walker, it crashed and four men legged it. Get him, get him, he's running out the side, get him. Despite searching nearby gardens, the runners were nowhere to be seen. He came in here. Can't not have done. But interceptors Richard Whiteley and Carl Hardcastle have got behind a car which matches the description of one seen in convoy with the stolen van. They're hoping it might be carrying the runners. No one with us. Go get him on now. <laughs> but there's only the driver on board. Um, Hello, you all right? Just come and have a seat in the vehicle, mate. Yeah. I do. What seems to be a problem? They're not 100% sure if it's the same car from earlier or if the man has anything to do with the stolen van, but they still need to ask some questions. Hi, mate. Hello, mate. What seems to be a problem? Well, you seem to be driving around with a stolen, in company with a stolen vehicle, so we were going to ask you the same. A stolen vehicle. <laughs> OK, why are you nervous? I've never been stopped by the police before. OK, have you had a drink tonight? No, no, nothing at all. Are you sure? 100%. Have you had any cannabis at all? No. Do you smoke cannabis? Uh, I do, but I haven't had any tonight. So where are all your passengers that you had with you? My passengers, they were just uh, my mates, so I've dropped them all off now. All right, and who was in the vehicle with you? Uh, there was uh, two people. What are their names? Uh, am I obliged to tell you that? No. I'm not trying to be awkward or anything, I just... Why do you not want to tell us? Hey, it's just nothing, I don't want to be seen as just giving out information. Oh, OK. This driver and this Cleo were, can't really link him as much to the burglary itself, but it's certainly been uh, it followed uh, in convoy with the uh, stolen vehicle. So we've just checked his details, checked him over, just going to make sure that there's nothing in the car in association with uh, going equipped or with a burglary or stolen property from the burglary. And then hopefully he'll be on his way and we'll just have to submit an intelligence report. There's nothing to link him directly to, to that stolen bilingo at the moment. Richard has a route round the motor, which seems to spook the driver. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know where they're from. Don't worry, 
No, mate, honestly, I... Don't start panicking. No, you're saying not, but... And he soon finds something dodgy in the glove compartment. Something that says medical cannabis. Now the driver's going to be given a drug test, and he has a confession to make. Can I just say something to you before you go any further? You know, when you asked me if I'd smoked any cannabis, I just want to say this now instead of, obviously, you finding out later. OK. And me lying. I did have some today, but it was earlier on. You've had some today? Yeah, I just want, okay. to, I just want to say that before you end up finding out. Please. All right. Dinner. Now, how long ago? Uh, four hours. About four hours. So he's admitted smoking cannabis four hours ago, and it'll take eight minutes to find out if it's still in his system. If you could just stick your tongue out for me. While they wait for the result of the drugs wipe... Right, brilliant. He says he's got a blue T-shirt on. Fantastic. Um, they get a positive result of their own. I think they've uh, found that lad, the one we saw. You've got a light, bright blue T-shirt Yeah. Well, it's got to come on it. So we've just had a call from uh, some other officers who are still in the area. Um, the lad who's made off from us and ran into the garden. Units just come across someone not too far away from that, that uh, garden where he's run from. Um, same description. Can't account for why he's been there, um, so he's going to be getting locked up. Meanwhile, the results of the drugs wipe has come through, and it's bad news for the driver. You're under arrest on providing a positive drugs wipe. You're also under arrest on suspicion of a non-prescribed to you drug. I promise you, I promise you I've yeah, never seen that before. The drugs wipe's come back positive, um, so he's, uh, he's been arrested. And we'll go down to uh, Ellen Road, um, and he'll no doubt have a blood sample taken from him. The driver was later found guilty of driving under the influence of drugs and fined £235, including costs, and banned from driving for 12 months. He was not linked in any way to the stolen van and no further action was taken regarding possession of the suspected cannabis. The two males, both under the age of 18, arrested in relation to the stolen van, were questioned before being released under investigation. It's Saturday night and interceptor Steph flies Chuck and Jamie Brown are on the lookout for boy racers in rented motors. Lots of young males like to come out and uh, show the flashy hire car, impress the ladies. And unfortunately, we'll be there to seize it off them if uh, they're doing something wrong. As the clock approaches midnight, they get a call that a hire car on the other side of the city has failed to stop for a firearms unit who are now in pursuit. Romeo 5 two, just shows on that pursuit, please. The rented BMWs managed to evade the cops, but it can't escape the city's network of number plate recognition cameras. Uh, the vehicle that failed to stop the one series has just hit a camera um, on its way into Shipley. So we're just making our way over there to see if we can pick it up. We've also got um, Bradford Council CCTV control room having a look for it as well, see if they can pick it up for us. The camera coverage around here is quite good. As the cameras have told them where the car is and which direction it's heading, they've got a good idea of which road it's coming in on. So decide to plot up and wait to see what happens. Let's, look, let's have a look at these that are coming past now. Just if we wait here, if it comes past us, we can go do a U here. That's a Beamer, what is it? It's a force. No. And their hunch soon pays off. It's there. It's opposite is there. It's the lights coming out of the way. Got it, got it. You got it? Yeah. Let it, Let it go. They don't want to spook the driver into a potentially dangerous pursuit, so keep a distance while they wait for reinforcements. 5-2 units towards Canal Road, please, just passing the Shell garage and the uh, Land Rover garage. We're behind that one series now. The Beamer driver seems to have noticed that he's got a marked cop car behind him, though he slowed his pace rather than upped it. 5-2 uh, speed, 2-5 miles an hour. I'm just coming past Colin Appleyard on your left. Have you got an ETA for another unit, please? The plan is to do a T-pack tactical pursuit and containment on the BMW, using three police cars to block it in from the front 
rear and side. Because previously made off from a, a firearms unit, we're directly behind it. We're just waiting for another unit to come so we can uh, put a preemptive box on this vehicle, basically put a car in front put, and keep the car behind. Um, it's more, more of a show of strength really to say, look, don't make off because we're here. They soon have company. Right, we've got an X5 behind us now. Do you want to hang on for another one? Yeah. I'm thinking he's shown his hand already. If he makes, if he makes off, he'll get out of a two car, won't he? With two police cars now behind him, the BMW driver decides to change his route. 5 2, left hand indication. And it's left, left. No, it's still not far. 5 2, left, 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 rising Hall Road over the railway line. Thankfully, for the safety of other road users, he still isn't putting pedal to the metal. Potential at these traffic lights if this unit gets on the back in time. Moments later, the third car joins them. I've got, we've got another unit. You want we've got two front there? Yep, no problems. Yeah, we've got three. We've got two X5s. They're ready to go, and then the traffic lights help out. 5-2 held at red. Can I get round? 5-2, do you want to put it on here if we can get round? It's always easier to box in a car if it's not moving. Just go for it, mate. So it's time to strike. It's a simple but textbook T-pack. Turn it off. Turn Switch it off. off! Turn it off! Switch it off! The Beamer's got nowhere to go. Keep your hands where we can see them. How many have got? Two. Just you two in the car? Two. Just two. The driver's coming quietly, unlike his passenger. Put my cuffs off because I ain't doing the cuffs out. Cuffs out coming off. Why? Because this car's failed to stop early for the police. That's your problem, not mine. It's not our problem. Listen, I am a passenger. You understand? You're in the car. Yeah, I don't give up. I'm a passenger. There you go. Then. You understand? I know the rules. Take my cuffs off because I'm in the passenger's cuffs in the car. I suggest you calm down. If he doesn't, he could be facing a trip to the cells. But first, they need to move the cars off the main road before finding out more about the driver. Right, where have you been tonight then and what have you been doing? No, I've just been here, officer. To eat, is that what you said? Ed. Yeah, all right. What's your first name, please? Saeed. So whose car is this then? It's a hire. It's a hire car. So where's the hire agreement, please? Dining agreement. Hmm. I didn't get an agreement with that. Oh, right. A receipt. Where's that receipt? It's in the dashboard. In that car there now? Yeah, it shows that with the, oh, okay. with the car. Everything. And how are you insured on that vehicle this evening? How am I insured? Mm. I'm in the company. A photo's come through of the man the driver's claiming to be, but it doesn't look much like him. Time for a bit more digging. Have you ever been arrested, sir? No, sir. You've not got your licence with you? No. No? Oh dear. Makes these things longer, you see. They've now found out the man they've arrested has a brother. What's your brother called? My brother. Hmm. The old. How old is he? Same age. You twins? Yeah. Yeah. How do we know that you're Saeed then? And not Dawood? They're making another inquiry. What's your mate called? Saeed. Saeed. All oh, right, right, right. The thing is, Saeed is fine to drive, while his brother is currently disqualified. And despite what the passengers just told them, they're convinced the driver isn't the brother he says he is. There's two options. You stick with your story, we don't believe you, you get arrested so we can put you on a fingerprint machine. Or you tell us who you really are, we'll deal with it roadside if we can do. It's up to you. My name is Dawood. So you're Dawood? No problem. So, he's been lying as well as driving whilst disqualified. Steph, we've got it out of him. He's Dawood. Oh, we've got it out of him, yeah. yeah. There we go. So why are they giving false details? Disco. Disqualified from driving, are you? Not anymore. Not anymore? You are according to this machine. All right, why should I believe you? Because you've lied to me about who you are, so why should I believe your story now? Have you got a driving licence? No. No. Yeah. Do you read on your test? No. Jack up some recovery, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So you've no licence, have you? 
No. All right. It's never a good move to lie to the interceptors. So at this moment in time, you don't have to say anything, but it may arm your defence if you're not mentioned when questioned, something which you later lie in court, and anything you do say may be given in evidence. He's going to be charged, and he and his passenger, who seems to have calmed down, will be walking home. 5-2, are you in a position to start some recovery, please, for Eisenhower Road? Yeah, it is one series, BMW. It is, yeah, yeah. He's trying to pass himself off as his brother by the sounds of it, but he doesn't even look anything similar. He's trying to stick to his story, bless him, um, but eventually he's given up the game. He's told us who he is. Turns out he's disqualified, so uh, Carl will be recovered now because he can't have it um, and he'll be reported for the offence. With the hire car being recovered, they're about to leave when fellow interceptor Simon Ellis, who was involved in the T-Pack, spots a man riding a motorised scooter which are illegal to use on the road unless they're taxed and insured. Can I see your driving licence and insurance, please? Yes, I'm afraid it's a motor vehicle, sir. It's not a bicycle and you're on a road. It's a motor vehicle, so you must be taxed and registered and insured to drive it, sir. Yes. Did anybody tell you this when you bought it? They didn't. So the scooter's going to be seized. Heaven forbid if he crashed into somebody, he wouldn't be insured, he's not taxed, he won't have a licence for it. There's no way we can give it back to him, he can't legally use it on a public road. And uh, as much as anything else, it's going to prevent him causing harm to anybody else. Though losing his scooter is the least of the man's problems. Checks have revealed he's living in the UK illegally. So they put your hands out in front of you, you're under arrest because you're illegally at, law at large in the UK. You're an overstayer, sir. When we've made some phone calls, he's an overstayer. He's made several failed applications to remain here, and he shouldn't be here. He's now going to be arrested and taken to the police station, uh, and the immigration authorities will probably process him in the morning. He may end up going back to Malaysia. Without us stopping things like this, then we don't catch people. So it's important to focus on the little things like this, and then it leads to something much bigger. With a car and a scooter seized, a disqualified driver off the road and an illegal overstayer nicked, it's been a productive couple of hours for the interceptors. The BMW driver was found guilty of obstructing a police officer, driving whilst disqualified and with no insurance. He received 60 days unpaid work and had to pay £170 in fines and costs. My man's lying fast. For driving with no licence or insurance, the man with the motorised scooter received seven points on his licence and ordered to pay £235 in fines and costs. His immigration status is being dealt with by the appropriate authorities. Coming up... Have you smoked some cannabis tonight? Uh, a dopey driver... Why can I smell cannabis? Have you got any in the car? Yeah. Takes the test. Quite simple. I need you to roll your tongue around your mouth. Open Which mouth. could lose him his licence. Um, so if the drugs wipe comes back as a negative, uh, and he'll be on his way. Obviously, if it comes back positive, then he'll be coming with us. Cannabis is big business in the UK. The black market for this Class B drug is worth more than two and a half billion pounds. Interceptor Chris Brumfit and his team have just been called to a home cannabis grow which has been broken into. Gangs often steal cannabis from home growers due to the large sums of money involved. We've had reports of this address, but we found a cannabis farm that a number of males were kicking on the door, rain on the door, and then reports that they were carrying cannabis plants out of the address into a van before making off. We've got here just a few minutes too late, really. Cannabis is being legalised in countries across the world, and some believe this should happen in the UK, but Chris has his concerns. A lot of calls for it to be legalised. Um, obviously, we see the, uh, the bad side of the use of cannabis with mental health effects, paranoia, um, and it's not something that, that I personally would be supporting, given the effects that I've seen it, it cause. The remaining plants and the growing equipment will be seized and destroyed. Today's job has made a difference. But there's plenty of evidence here for us to go on. Hopefully we'll identify some offenders, and we've certainly taken this off the street and prevented it from being sold to people. Three days later, Chris is out on the night shift with fellow interceptor Greg, 
when a Ford Focus heading onto the motorway catches their attention. Chris's favourite film, Car Chase, is in automotive blockbuster The Fast and the Furious. But that's the complete opposite of how the Focus is being driven. The driver finally spots the blue lights and pulls over. So Greg goes to have a chat with him. And as soon as the window comes down, he's hit... Hi, mate. You all right? ..with a familiar aroma. Have you smoked some cannabis tonight? Uh, no. No? Why can I smell cannabis? Uh, I've smoked some earlier on today, but... No, have you got any in the car? No. Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Have you anything to drink tonight? No, no, no Nothing? The aroma of marijuana, combined with the dopey driving, could mean this fella is under the influence. Do you want to get out of the car and come over to the side of the road here, but just be very, very careful because it's obviously a main busy road? Just go into the stand over there for me. Over to the side here, mate. Over to the side. Right, reason why we've stopped you yeah. is because, obviously, you were sort of drifting and floating around on the road. You didn't appear to have any idea what were happening. Well, OK. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was. Do you not? Um, I can smell cannabis in the car, so I'm going to search under Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act. OK. OK? Yeah. So, do you have any? any no. So any hit secreted or anything like that? No. Right, OK. Just stand over here, because I don't want Sorry. you to jump off or run into the road or anything like that. The driver's telling the truth. He doesn't have anything on him. So Chris takes a look around the Focus while Greg asks him a few more questions. Right. Is there any cannabis in that vehicle? Mm. Sure. How come your car smells so much then? Uh, because I, I smoked in my car earlier on. Uh, Chris has found another possible explanation. So immediately, there's a fine there in the glove compartment. There's two bags and some empty bags. So I would certainly suggest that's nothing more than personal use. Possession of cannabis is one thing, but if he's driving under the influence of it, the man could be facing at least a year's ban and a hefty fine. And he lost smoke some cannabis. Do you know that you can get done for drug driving, being under the influence yeah, yeah, of drugs? Yeah. People yeah. don't realise how much it impairs your driving. No, I, I do understand that. As he's admitted to smoking cannabis just over 12 hours ago, the man is going to be given a drug wipe. Except Chris doesn't have any. We are just past the Elland Road exit. Yeah, no worries, cheers, mate. So we're just going to request the unit bring a, a drugs wipe kit down so they can uh, take some samples off his tongue and see if he's actually under the influence of cannabis at the moment while he's driving. Obviously, he's got drugs in the car. He's clearly been using them. So we'll see if he's actually got any in his systems this moment in time. While Chris bags up the evidence, his colleagues arrive with the drugs wipe. Right. Quite simple. I need you to roll your tongue around your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. And after a few licks, the driver has an eight-minute wait to find out if the cannabis he's admitted smoking is still in his system. He's not got any previous convictions regarding drugs at all. Um, so if the drugs wipe comes back as a negative, uh, and he'll be on his way. Obviously, if it comes back positive, then he'll be coming with us. But it's negative. The driver's clean. Come back negative on the drugs wipe, which is a good thing. So he's going to receive a community resolution for the possession of the Class B, because um, he's got no prior convictions or any kind of drugs involvement with us, uh, and then he'll be on his way. A community resolution order means that if the driver admits possessing the cannabis, he won't have a criminal record because of it but it will go on file in case he's caught in a similar situation again. It's not, um, it's not come back as anything in your system, mate. So you're going to get a uh, community resolution for the possession of the drugs. Are you willing to accept one of those? Yeah. The alternative is you get arrested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. Are you admitting the offence of possession of the Class B? Yeah, 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 so this is the most appropriate way to resolve it, rather than sending you to courts and wasting courts' time and your time, yeah, yeah. because the outcome would be the same anyway. So the driver's off home, and Chris and Greg can continue on their shift. It is only two bags of cannabis, but at least he's not took them before he started driving. Um, and the consequences would have, could have been far worse for him and the public. And the Interceptors will be back at the same time next week.
Later, we delve deep into the criminal underworld of the capital in the 90s. The Real Narcos UK, London's bloodiest, is new at 10. Before that, we join the crew of the most advanced ship of its kind in the world. Warship Life at Sea is new next, after a quick news update.